So there are many different ways and setups for simply moto vlogging, or maybe you're up in it and you're shooting documentary films, or maybe you're just grabbing some simple B-roll. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three different moto vlog setups. Welcome back, Bike Alex. Ryan Erlacher here, lawbitingbiker.com. I always thank you. That's right, you for checking back in. Now, we're gonna talk about a lot of different products in this video, and everything I mention, I will put affiliate links in the description below. That's no additional cost to you, but if you appreciate what we do on this channel, you wanna support us, you can click through, and if you make a purchase, we do get a small commission. We really appreciate your support, and it helps keep the lights on here on the channel. So I'm just gonna give you some initial thoughts about moto vlogging and GoPro specifically. But before we get started with that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon. Every time those are hit, another biker joins a revolution and we would love to have you be part of it. And when we reach 200,000 subscribers, I'm gonna release my full Sturgis documentary for free. So let me start by saying GoPros have their place. They are action cameras and thus should really be used for action. If you're trying to use them for other things, uh, you all know you can tell they're a GoPro shot. They have infinite focus. You're not gonna get any shallow depth of field. Uh, the color science isn't that great. The images can be uh, over sharpened. And of course, they just fall apart in low light and that's just because they have very small sensors. So I like them for what they're made for. So with that said, I do believe GoPro still has the best image as far as action cameras go. Now you can also use ND filters, obviously to lower the shutter speed to get some of that motion blur but that's not always practical on GoPros, especially when I'm shooting documentary films and riding cross country because the light is constantly changing whether you're riding through clouds and then it's sunny and it's just not uh, uh, feasible to be switching ND filters around. Now, if you're in a controlled situation where you're gonna be using a GoPro and you know that it's gonna stay a certain light, then certainly strap on an ND filter and get some of that motion blur that we all love. My point is, if you wanna get great looking cinematic shots, then use something, uh, you know, a high-end camera with a great lens and, you know, variable ND filter. And then you can mix your GoPro shots in for the action stuff. But I just wanna say that if you're just making stuff for yourself or maybe you're sharing with a few friends, then certainly just use your GoPros for whatever you want. I'm just stating that if you wanna make higher-end cinematic productions, then you're not gonna probably be able to do it with just a GoPro and you'll need to upgrade to something else. So let's dive into the three different setups that I have uh, on the three different helmets and why I have them set up the way I do and what I use each one for. And I'm gonna show you some different options and ways you can do things more expensive and maybe just a little bit cheaper. So I'm just gonna go over some uh, basic equipment real quick because there's some commonalities between the three helmets and setups that I'm gonna show you. And so I can just go over some of the main equipment one time. So when it comes to audio and microphones, there's only, I've tried a lot, and there's one go-to that is just super quality and super clean audio. Um, and this is all that I use uh, for all my setups. And this is a uh, giant squid audio omnidirectional lavalier microphone. Um, they last, they're thick, they're made well. They are not the cheapest, um, but I will link to them in the description below. The other thing some guys like to do, so this would be just for rider audio, just me to the camera. Sometimes guys like to uh, have comms uh, in their helmets and they'll be riding with someone else and they wanna pick up the audio in their speaker from the other rider plus their audio. Well, there is this is one way to do that and you can buy from Giant Squid Audio. It's a single 3.5 millimeter jack into dual omnidirectional microphone. So it's a one into two, so you can pick up two different channels basically with this. And so you could place one in your helmet over the speaker that your audio comes through and then one somewhere around your mouth and you could pick up that conversation. So at the time of this video, uh, I'm running quite a few GoPro Hero 9s. Um, so you're gonna need your camera, obviously. I would do nine or higher just for the, the fact that they have wonderful image stabilization, which you're gonna want when you're on motorcycles. 
The other thing you're going to need is you got to get audio into these and you can't just go into a GoPro with a simple 3.5 millimeter jack. There is no way to do that. Instead, you'll need this and I would only suggest there's some aftermarket ones and they've got a lot of bad reviews and they often fail. No, these aren't super cheap, but I would definitely spring for the GoPro um, and this is a uh, USB-C into 3.5 millimeter. So you're gonna have to do that and plug into the side of the camera with this box. And then you can take that box, which we're gonna talk about what you do with this box, and then, uh, or the audio adapter, and then you can plug your 3.5 into the side of that, and then you'll get audio. All right, so I'm gonna talk about some cages here in a moment for the GoPros. And as we get into the helmets, you'll kind of see how I use those. But a cheaper option is not to buy a cage because these GoPros are pretty durable these days, the way they are, and uh, they're you know waterproof the way they are, and they've got the you know the uh, tabs built right in, so you can mount them. Um, and I will show you in a moment what you would do with this. There's some different options for the audio box, but that would be a cheaper option. But I just want you to know there are cages on the market and I'm going to show you a couple that I've used. So you'll see a lot of these um, on Amazon and this is a Ulanzi. And I actually used these um, both uh, for adventure riding off-road and street for a while, uh, especially on top of the helmet, which we'll go over in a minute. Um, but I did try it with chin mounts. And what I don't like about the Ulanzi and why I got away from them is because they're heavy and they're made of metal so they're super durable but your helmet's already heavy and you'll notice it especially when you put one of these guys on your chin it really weights the front of your helmet and it tends to pull the helmet down over time so i've went away from the ulanzi and i have moved over to the small rig uh, and the reason i like these small rig is because they uh, are plastic and no that may not be as durable but i mean what are you really doing uh you know that you need it so durable uh they are very very light and although they're plastic it seems to be quality i haven't had any issues the back opens of course and then it snaps shut your gopro can go in here and we'll just go ahead and do this i'll kind of show you how they set this up and uh, now they come with a battery door, the small rig, and it is right here. So it'll come with a battery door because you need that USB-C cutout so that you can plug your audio adapter into, and they just simply snap into place like this, all right? And then once you do that, you can actually put it in the small rig cage, and it's nice. This snaps closed like that, and then you can actually, without taking this off, your mount, you can actually remove this battery door and swap batteries really quick. And of course, it's got the USB-C cutout there, so now you can have audio. The additional part to that is the actual audio box. Now, the Ulanzi has that too. You see on the bottom, in case you do want to use Ulanzi, it's got a nice cutout there where you can place your audio box, plug it into your camera. Well, the small rig has the same thing, and it actually goes on here like so. It's got an arrow, and you just push it on and it snaps into place and that and then you can get it off real easy too and that's in case you didn't want to use it with an audio box you could just pop the ears down maybe you don't even want audio and you could use the cage that way um, but those pop up and then this audio box snaps on there it's nice and secure and then of course you can slide your audio adapter and it's super tight so it's not going to rattle out or fall out and then you can go ahead and plug your audio in. So I really like these uh, small rigs and uh, this is what I'm gonna be sticking with for now. And one thing I failed to mention that I really like about the giant squid audio omnidirectional lavaliers uh, is that they have a 90 degree 3.5 millimeter jack, which makes it really nice for going down and getting out of the way instead of coming straight out. So if you're not getting this mic and you're getting something else, I would buy a 90 degree converter um, just makes it a cleaner setup. And while we're talking about microphones, I definitely suggest that you get some uh, wind muffs or dead cats. Uh, this basically just goes over. Instead of the foam, uh, this goes over. I would take the foam off. But uh, you're going to get wind up in your helmet, even if you have, you know, like a showy Neotech um, or anything like that, some high-end helmets. You're still going to get wind up in there and noise. And this just helps cut down on that and makes for cleaner audio. 
All right, and just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a lot of man hours, effort, and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member. I will link to it in the description below. There are benefits for becoming a member, such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. It is nothing but bikers helping bikers. You get live video broadcasts and chat podcasts early, premium videos up on requests, and access to those ride, meetup, and events. We appreciate you considering becoming a member. All right, let's get back into your video. All right, the other thing you're going to want to have on hand, again, links in the description below to all this, but these are little sticky pads on the back. And then uh, they've got some uh, loops on the front here where you can, or channels, I should say. And then you can put your zip ties through those and zip tie things down. And you'll see in my helmets when we uh, take a closer look. You can stick wiring down, but you can also stick that down and then zip tie your actual microphone around it anywhere inside your helmet. And if you are going to use ND filters for a project, then I highly suggest the Polar Pro. ND filters, it's a set of three, and I think they're the best quality. And it's really nice because you can rotate this lens off and the ND filters simply rotate on, making it a really smooth conversion. So with that said, let's dive into the first helmet and the particular setup. All right, so the first helmet we're gonna look at is my Simpson Mod Bandit. Now I have this set up in a very particular way. Obviously many of you have seen this, a traditional chin mount setup. Um, now I would use this for a very specific reason and one example would be like when I'm reviewing motorcycles uh, or anytime that I want to put the viewer and maybe make them feel like they're actually riding the bike um, or at least in the cockpit with me. I do want to say working with GoPro Hero 9s as of the time of this video, the Hero 11 Black is out. I don't find it necessary to upgrade to the 10 or 11. They just don't have enough new features for me. The 9 solid, it's been around. All the software is up to date and it's actually running good unlike the new models. This is my audio converter there uh, from GoPro. That's the USB-C, goes on the side of the camera. The small rig cage, we've talked about that. Battery door so I can hook that USB-C into there. On the other side is our 3.5 millimeter. This is my lavalier mic. It's going into my helmet. Next, I wanna talk about the actual chin mount. All right, I can go ahead and pop this off. What we have here is an actual chin mount that is made for specific helmets. Uh, this particular one is made for a Simpson mod. It follows the contour of the little V there you can see. And of course, I've got these for different helmets. Uh, we are an affiliate. These are awesome and super high quality. Uh, I'll show you a little bit further here, but it's from Ride Tech Moto, and I will link to it in the description below. I've tried a lot of different companies, but these are the best in my opinion. So this is one, again, it comes for your specific, you can pick over on the website for your specific helmet. Um, but this is kind of the full kit and what you can get from the Ride Tech Moto alcohol pad, of course, to clean. We've got a thumb screw there, typical. Um, and these are even, to me, they're uh, as good as GoPro. They might even be getting them from GoPro, I don't know. Uh, but uh, you've got a string. I'll show you that in a minute. So that's everything. This is the full package. Of course, you can just get individual items, but I just buy them in the kit. So this is what's actually adjust, and you've got two different adjustments there, and that's what's actually right on this camera already. And of course, then that can fit right into the chin mount. You can get it adjusted how you want. So that's nice, comes in the kit. Typical buckle, GoPro style buckle. This, of course, I already said, the chin mount portion comes with that. And then we've got this, which I like, and uh, just got a sticky pad and a string you can tie through. And I typically, when this is on, um, I'll take this, you can see it here on the side. It's just a safety and you can wrap this around whatever you want on your actual camera. So if it were to whatever reason, I've never had it happen, but if it comes out of the mount, this tether safety string actually catches your camera, keeps it from falling on the road and uh, getting damaged. All right, so I'm a big fan of modular helmets. A lot of guys that motovlog stick themselves to a full face because they can't, you know, haven't devised a system, I guess, yet to, so that they can actually have a total motovlog setup with a mic yet still be able to open this without being you know, a wire that you have to contend with. So I'll show you, we'll dive a, a little bit deeper inside and kind of show you how I got that worked out. These are great to have on hand. Uh, they come in kits, again, we'll link to it. Um, it's just a little pad sticky on the back and it's got channels in it 
and you can simply put a zip tie. Once you stick it to something, you know, they're wire organizers, you can put the zip tie through it, zip tie wires, whatever you need. And so that's exactly what I've got going on up in here now that I've explained that stuff, is I simply, uh, you know, put the sticky pad and zip tie. I, I uh, used uh, two of them, really, uh, in there. One is the wires, because these lavaliers obviously have a lot of wire and you can just zip tie it all up in there and just, you can see I've given myself just what I need to come out of the helmet. Um, and then of course, I've actually zip tied with another one, the actual mic down uh, and the, the lavalier with the dead cat. Uh, for motovlogging, I always run a chin guard because it cuts down on a lot of the wind sound. So you get that clean audio and that goes right over here and protects this whole mic and keeps that wind from coming in when this is closed. But all I did, is uh, took a Dremel tool and because the wires got to come out here and you obviously can't pinch it and then I can I won't actually put this back into place but you get it I can click this back into place like so and now my wire comes out and goes up here obviously on the chin mount portion where I'm gonna need to plug in to my audio and so once you have everything together and all the parts a super clean moto vlog setup with a chin mount and the ability to use a modular helmet all right real quick we'll get back into the helmet setups but we've got another great video coming for you guys that's on 360 cams they do have their place if used right this is the uh, new insta 360 one rs with that beautiful one inch sensor finally they came out with a bigger sensor we've also got an x3 nonetheless uh, we've got a bunch of different setups handlebar setups uh, we're going to do crash bar setups, both street. We've got adventure um, setups. We're going to have setups to the rear for you guys. Of course, how we did it, what kind of shots you get, what they can be used for, and all the parts. We actually tweaked a lot of stuff and kind of pieced things together. And of course, we're going to share it all with you guys. So if you're at all interested in how we use and mount 360 cams, it will be coming on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell icon so you're notified when we drop that video. Okay, so the next helmet I'm going to go over with you is my Scorpion EXO AT950 helmet, uh, adventure helmet. This is the helmet that I use when I'm off-road adventure riding. Now you'll see currently I have a chin setup, very specific. We'll get into the parts in a moment, the way I had to set this up. Um, but I think for adventure riding, especially, I would be using this on my KLR650. I think for adventure riding, it really shows the action. Now, this is a different style chin mount, and I'm going to go ahead and take it off and show you why. So as I take it off here, you can see, same thing, I've got a tether uh, here. Uh, so if this camera drops, it catches it. And what I want to show you is... Ride Tech Moto doesn't make a chin mount for this for obvious reasons because there literally is no room here to get a chin mount. So you're going to have to get a little bit of creative. I'm going to help you with that uh, if you're going to use this helmet or a similar style helmet. We're going to use more universal parts. So this is a typical what you get from GoPro. It is a sticky pad and a typical helmet mount. Moving in, because this is off to the side, obviously, I want my camera centered on the helmet. I don't want it off to the side. You could. I just prefer the look of being centered. It's kind of exactly what I'm seeing. And so in order to do that, uh, you're going to need some different parts, uh, kind of a converter here to a 90. Um, it, I forget what all the parts are called. This is like a J hook. And of course, you've got a standard buckle mount. I'm going to link to all these parts. It comes in a kit with the different parts that you're going to need. It gives you lots of different uh, parts for different setups. You can pretty much uh, rig anything you need with these style hooks. And of course, as you saw, once I get that put on and adjusted and all that, it basically allows me to have that camera kind of, and you can see it's a little bit off, but the lens is exactly in front of the chin and so that you're gonna need those parts to get this working and so just like on the Simpson very similar chin curtain Dremel tool hole so my lavalier mic can come out and it's all neat up in there and bunched up and right in front of my mouth so basic setup there also on the Scorpion in addition to the chin mount setup I also have a top helmet mount 
And uh, I also have this on another helmet, which I'm going to move to, and that is my Shoei Neotech. But it's the same, and I'll show you how I get the top mount set up. All right, so next we're going to go over my Shoei Neotech 1. Uh, there are now Neotech 2s out, and yes, it is a modular helmet with GoPro and audio setup. Now, you'll see on this one, I don't even have a chin mount on it. Um, this is my go-to helmet, um, especially when I'm shooting documentary films, and it's a top mount. Uh, position. The reason I do that in documentary films is I don't necessarily want the rider to be in the cockpit with me or riding the bike. It's more about what I'm seeing and the scenery and a lot of times I'm filming the other guys in the group. But very similar to the chin mount, obviously we've got the same small rig cage. Now obviously lavalier wire 3.5 that goes to my mic, it plugs in there. Um, but what I do, very simple, so I don't have to contend with any wires here. I can still use my modular helmet. I just run it around the back and just pop it in somewhere here around your neck roll, whatever you want to do. And uh, I take my liner out and I just shove all the extra wire up above my liner and then pop the liner back in. You can pull the uh, uh, neck roll here if you want. Right here between by the cheek pad here, that's actually... Uh, foam there, uh, windscreen. This is a very quiet helmet, so I don't really have to worry. I haven't had to worry about putting one of these on. I actually just use the foam, and that's the actual tip of the lavalier, and I just pinch it in there. And again, by putting it there, I don't have any wires uh, on the modular part that opens. Keeps a, a very clean setup. And you'll see on here, a lot of times maybe I don't want to run my GoPro setup and I just want to run down the road not filming. Well, I don't want this dangling around and I certainly don't want to have to take this and reroute it every time. So pretty simple. These are just little mini sticky hooks basically. That way I can just pop that in there, tighten the wire up a little bit and I can run down the road without uh, this flopping around. Then I'm, when I'm ready, I can certainly get my mo moto vlog set up again. One nice thing, if you want to run just a little bit lighter, you ne wouldn't necessarily, if you don't want, even have to use this cage, all right? We would just have our GoPro, of course, it'll be mounted up there, but we want to get the audio in. And all I did in the past is simply, you can see it's still there, as I put Velcro right there on my helmet, and I put Velcro on the actual GoPro audio converter, and I simply Velcroed it there, stuck it, and then I took my audio into my GoPro, and so it looks something like that. And then of course my 3.5 would go, I'd get some extra slack and put it into the bottom of this, but ran for many years like this and a little bit simpler way if that's how you want to get set up. All right, your journey's not done on the channel. I'm popping a couple of videos on the screen here for you. Hopefully something useful or entertaining. Heck, maybe both. At any rate, when you're done watching videos, make sure you get out there and ride every chance you get, Bikeaholics. Peace.